It's the parrot apocalypse. In the bird world, there are certain spectacles that you have to see to believe. Migrations, murmurations, and massive flocks of birds can all be breathtaking to witness in real time. One such event occurs daily in the South Texas city of Brownsville. Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Badgerland Birding. Today, Derek and I are on the trail of some parrots that are seen near the city of Brownsville in southern Texas. Now, there's a couple different species that seem like they come to a particular park to roost every single night, and we're gonna see if we can find them. On the way, we saw a white-tailed kite, which was really cool. So we're starting off strong here. We're gonna hope to catch them just before sunset when they all should come in, so hopefully we can still get some views when it's light out. For many years, flocks of parrots have made their way into Olivera Park to roost. Most of them are a species called red-crowned parrots, but sometimes other parrot species are mixed in as well. This is a well-known nightly event in the region, and birders from far and wide come in just before dark to try and take in the experience. While they are regular at this location, the exact time and place they end up roosting is variable. This means some nights they end up roosting in a place where they aren't easily visible, and sometimes they get in too late to get very good looks. We were hoping to catch these parrots on a good day when they arrive early enough to see them clearly. It sounds kind of like it's this big spectacle where like every night they apparently kind of come in. And so it's uh, almost like a show, like you go show up and you wait for this big thing to happen. So we're excited to see it. Hopefully they do all come in because it sounds like occasionally not as many come in or they show up somewhere different. So. Uh, Hopefully we'll see a bunch of parrots. We got to the park about an hour before sunset and the conditions were windy. This was a bit of a concern because the best way to locate the parrots is to hear their loud and distinctive calls. Well this park is pretty much similar to all the other places I've seen urban parrots in. No parrots yet but I think it'll take a little while before they come in so hopefully we will be able to find some. What's probably not in our favor is the wind because it'll make it a little bit harder to hear what we are listening for, but hopefully the pairs will be loud enough that we'll just hear through it anyway. Yeah, they're normally pretty loud, so hopefully it'll cut through that wind noise. We started searching the park, finding European starlings, blue-winged teals, and a green heron. Then, we heard something that immediately caught our attention. We had a flock, but they flew in, we heard them, and then they flew right out, so. Still none perched that uh, we can easily identify. We do have some call recordings, maybe we can ID them by call. But I'm hoping they'll actually come in so we can see the different species and check them out and compare them and enjoy them. We headed in the direction that the parrots flew, thinking they may have ended up landing somewhere nearby. We continued picking up more bird species, including a great kiskadee, a northern mockingbird, and a loggerhead shrike. From time to time, more parrots flew overhead, all leaving just as quickly as they arrived. Just as it was getting too dark to see, the biggest flock we had spotted yet passed overhead and appeared to land somewhere we would actually have access to. Just had another parrot sighting with a big flock that came over. We heard them before we saw them. It looked like they might have gone down somewhere over in the distance in a subdivision. So we're going to go over there and see if it may be there in a place that we can see. Uh, but it's starting to get pretty dark, so I don't know what the views would even be like. When we got out of the car, the noise was incredible, and we finally saw some of these parrots up close in the waning light. Wild, huh? Yeah, it is wild. I don't know where the rest of them went because we saw like hundreds, but there's a number of them in this tree and they really packed in there and kind of just vanished. I mean, especially with it being dark like this, it's green on green. It's crazy, we were just about to leave. Then an enormous group came in. And some of them landed in this neighborhood. They look like they're all red crowned Amazon, but apparently there's multiple species in here. It was just, the volume is insane and they're in this tree and they can just like disappear basically. If they like all went in and stopped calling, you never know they were there. When it was too dark to even record video, we left the parrots feeling glad to have seen them, but wishing to have better views in the light. Well, there was our dark parrot sighting. I didn't really think it would be that way, but that's how it ended up being. 
Uh, but it was still cool to see that huge flock of parrots and to get a close-up view even though it was pretty dark by the time they landed. A few days later, we returned to Olivera Park to a much different experience. We're back at the parrot place. And as you can hear, we're having much better luck this time than we did last time. We went into one of the neighborhoods and they're actually feasting on the uh, fruit trees they have here. So, we've only seen red crowned Amazon, but we think we may have heard some other species, but we love to see them too. The red crowned parrot, also known as the red crowned Amazon, is green with bright red on the top of their head and a purplish blue color behind the red. These birds feed mostly on fruits, as well as seeds and nuts. They will use their feet to grasp food, and then use their bills to crack open or dehusk it. Oftentimes, these social birds will forage together in medium to large sized flocks. The range of the red crown parrot is somewhat complicated. They are native to parts of northeastern Mexico, where they are now in danger due to a combination of habitat loss and the removal of wild birds for the pet trade. This same pet trade, however, has led to populations being established in places that they never naturally inhabited, as pet birds escaped or were released, and then went on to colonize the new area. This is the case in Southern California and Florida. The South Texas population of red-crowned parrots is a different story, as there is a lot of debate about where these birds came from. Some hypothesize that they were also escaped pets, but others believe that they came north from the population in Mexico due to the close proximity between the two places. It's even possible that the population in Brownsville is a combination of wild birds that moved north and released pets that started flocking together. Either way, the red-crowned parrots in South Texas are now well established and don't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. Furthermore, these noisy birds have been embraced by the city of Brownsville and are something of a mascot for the city. While watching the parrots, we saw them fly from place to place, eat fruit, and chatter with each other. Eventually, they moved over to one of the larger trees in the park. Hey, don't look up with your mouth open! This is insane. This is wild. This is way different than our first experience. It's the parrot apocalypse. <laughs> this is uh, the experience we wanted with the parrots, I would say. The experience we needed. As darkness settled over Brownsville, so did the parrots settle in to the point where if not for the noises they made, one would never even know they were there. Wow, that was an insane experience. The parrots are still behind us, but it's starting to get a little too dark to see. Yeah, they all came in like a swarm, and we were able to finally get some better views, so I'm really glad we came back and got our fulfilling Brownsville parrot experience. Yeah, if, it makes a huge difference if they stayed in the park, like if they come to roost in the park or if they go somewhere else. So if you don't get the full experience, maybe try a different day, because uh, this is definitely something you want to experience. The parrots of South Texas are certainly a fascinating story worth telling and worth keeping an eye on. Will these birds continue to live and proliferate in the region? Only time will tell, but so far they have been going strong and provide a truly captivating spectacle for those lucky enough to see it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Yeah.